Say, so. so. We've been talking about ruminating Romans, right? This is week six that I've been on this, and uh, we're only on chapter four today. Hallelujah. How many chapters are in Romans? Who can tell me off the top of their head? How many? 13, keep going. Is it 13? 16, that's what I was thinking. I'm, I was like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. 16, yes. <laughs> Your pastor has known to be wrong. <laughs> wow, pastor, that's revelation. <laughs> Said nobody. Okay, moving right along here. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about how's your progress. How's your progress? How many of you know what progress means? Does progress mean reverse? No. By the way, thank you for the drinks, for all of you out there. Mm. If you've never had one of these, it is delicious. It's got strawberries and blueberries, fresh, and, and excuse me. Now I've got some energy. All right, I'm going to start out with this quote by Robert Schuller. He said this, I'd rather attempt to do something great and fail than attempt to do nothing and succeed. Anybody succeeded at doing nothing? And what did it accomplish? Anybody tried to do something and it actually failed? But you actually did what? You learned something from it, didn't you? That's right. You can actually learn by doing nothing. Nothing gets accomplished. Romans chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, this is out of the Passion Translation, says this, Even King David himself speaks to us regarding the complete wholeness that comes inside a person when God's powerful declaration of righteousness is heard over our life. Did you know that God spoke over you? When you got born again, God actually called you by name. Psalm, Psalms tells us that. David tells us that. God's called you by your name. And he doesn't go down the list. Bib, Bob, Jim, whatever your name is. He knows exactly who you are. <laughs> is that right? And he called you by your name. And when you got born again, he actually declared over you, you are righteous. You know what righteous means? It's not what we heard in the 70s. Ooh, you righteous, man. No, it's something totally different. Righteous means right with God. Matter of fact, that spirit that's on the inside of you, put your hand on your tummy right there. Say, in here is the real me. What you see on the outside is nothing like what's on the inside. That's the honest to God truth. It's said of, of uh, I don't know if it was John G. Lake or Smith Wigglesworth, one of them said every morning he would look in the mirror and he would say, the man on the inside is a thousand times stronger and bigger than the man on the outside. That's you thousand times bigger, stronger. And then that's who the devil sees. It is who he sees. He just hopes you don't see it. Because if you don't see it, then he'll play with your mind. But if you see it, he'll stay away from you. Mm. I've preached myself happy already. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Yeah. All right, let's continue on. Um, let's, let's start again. Even King David himself speaks to us regarding the complete wholeness that comes inside a person when God's powerful declaration of righteousness is heard over our life. Apart from our works, God's work is enough. Here's what David says. What happy fulfillment is ahead for those whose rebellion has been forgiven and whose sins are covered by the blood. Then verse 8, what happy progress. Say progress. progress. 
comes to them when they hear the Lord speak over them, I will never hold your sins against you. Woo! I will never hold your sins against you. What a declaration. God the Father spoke that over you. You know, when I was in my 20s, you know, I knew Jesus, and we'd come into the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, I had, my wife didn't, my wife wouldn't let me speak in tongues in the house. I had to go outside, like, you know, those of you that go outside to smoke. I had to go outside to pray in tongues. But uh, anyway, in my 20s, I didn't think I really was that bad of a person. I mean, yeah, I did a few stupid things as a teenager. How many of you did stupid things as a teenager? <laughs> but you know, I wasn't that bad. You know, when I look at 65 and I hear this scripture, I'm going, whoa, man, what a thankful thing that Jesus is spoke o has spoken over me that I'm never going to hold any of your sins against you because there was a whole heaping bunch of sin the Lord had to overlook. Is that true? I am so thankful for what Jesus has done. Verse 8 again, it says, What happy progress comes to them when they hear the Lord speak over them, I will never hold your sins against you. What an amazing father. Happy Father's Day. What an amazing father. Let's, let's use this as a launching point as I have in the others. Let's go on to some of the other things Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, and then 12 through 16 out of the Passion. It says, My passion is to be consumed with him. I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. I will be one with him in his sufferings and become like him in his death. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. You know, we belong to the devil at one time. We were the devil's property. And according to the scriptures, the scripture says that the devil took us captive at his will. Whenever he wanted, he could walk into our life. How many of you as a, as a younger person got involved in sin and you really didn't mean to? Did you know that that's the enemy that took you captive at his will? He used you willingly. See, the world, they're like, um, what do you call those puppets that are on the screen? What's that official word? Marionettes. That's, that's who the world is. The devil just pulls the strings however he wants. Right now, there is such upheaval in the world governments. We are, they, they are pushing the envelope to go to a one-world government, you know, hard and fast. But you know what? It's not really the men that are the guilty ones. There is an unseen enemy who is, who, according to the Bible... If you read the Bible and you look at today's headlines, you go, wow, they're both the same. I'll just jump out here a little bit. How many of you saw this past week the news article? I, I talked about a different one a few weeks ago. This one's totally different. News article where scientists in the U.K., have made a totally synthetic human being. They didn't take DNA from people. They made their own. 
and they're growing, growing that embryo in a placenta that was made by man synthetically. Did not have a human sperm, did not have a human egg, did not have human DNA. They made it themselves. Oh, that's too, that's just too much. It was in the news, not just in one place, several places, buried. But here's the good news. Those scientists promised that they would never use it for evil. <laughs> How many of you believe that? If you do, I have a bridge I want to talk to you about, some real estate. Jesus said, in the days when he's getting ready to come back, it would be like in the days of Noah. You know what was walking the earth in the days of Noah? The Nephilim, the giants. You know where those giants came from? Synthetic human beings. If you don't believe me, read Chuck Missler. He's a big scientist. He's on, gone home to be with the Lord now. But he has details throughout human race, especially the pre-Adamic stuff, or pre post Adamic, but pre-flood, and he's got details from original writings, cuneiform, different things, where he goes back and he proves what I'm talking to you about right now. I'm telling you, we are coming so close to the end of all things, but the devil wants to push the timeline so he can set up his one world government. And I'm here to tell you, I'm going to proclaim it loud and clear. He ain't going to win. His antichrist that he has chosen, he'll go unseated again until we get this harvest in. Satan's not going to abort what Jesus is doing. We're going to have the final harvest, and we're going to get out of here, and it's going to be glorious. And he can have his own little glory for seven years, and then he's going to go take his, his speedboat skis and go flying on the lake of fire, but moving right along. So, verse 13, it says, I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I have one compelling focus. Say one. I forget all the past. How much of the past did he forget? I forget all the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. Did you catch that? Let me read it again. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to what is here and now. What does he fasten his heart to? Who can agree with me that the Apostle Paul probably had greater revelation than each one of us? Who can agree with me that the Apostle Paul probably walked with Jesus where we've never been? So when the Apostle Paul says, I didn't apply Everything, my whole focus, my, my attention, I didn't put it on here and now. I put it on my future. So what do you mean, Pastor? Everything that we give our heart and our focus and our attention to here and now, and I'm talking to men today, toys, you know, my wife swears to me that the only difference between me at the age of 65 and me at the age of five is my toys have gotten more expensive. <laughs> you do all, you do understand that all of that. <clears throat> How many ever got a brand new car and in 15 years it was still brand new? I 
I've seen men out there <laughs> barking at their wife while they're washing their car. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> Honey, bring me some iced tea. <laughs> one of those will last because you're sowing fruit. The other one won't. Decide which one will. Dr. Kevin, when he was in heaven, Jesus told him every act of kindness. Say kindness. kindness. Say Every act of kindness will receive reward from Jesus. Did you know when you're kind to your spouse, you receive reward for that? I know, Pastor, I do it all the time. Come here, baby. I'm not talking about that kind of kindness. <laughs> Trust me, she reads a whole lot into that. I'm talking about those things that go behind the scenes. How many of you, no, nah, I won't say that. Just let me put it this way. There have been times when we men were right. It might be very few, but there's been times when we were right and we just let it go. You know what? That was an act of kindness. You humble yourself. Is that true? There have been times when my wife was right, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, and she just let it go. That's an act of kindness. I'm sitting here preaching better than you're amen, and I'm just telling you, Every act of kindness, every act of kindness, everything that you show. That's why, hear me, I, I was talking to the prayer team this morning. I put a post on Facebook yesterday of a warrior fellowship in Tulsa. Five women, five women took 245 bags of groceries and water to homeless. Five women. And they went downtown Tulsa and they passed it out. Went to all the camps around where they knew the, the homeless camps and tents were. And they passed it out as fast as they could go. Five women. And I said, where were the men who would send their wife downtown Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Come on, men. We need to step up to the plate. I heard uh, R.W. Shambach say this. I think I may have repeated it a few times already. But he said, If we men in the church would have allowed the women to be who God created them to be, to be the preachers and the teachers and the evangelists, if we would have allowed them to be who God created them to be, Jesus would have already been back. Instead, they get a little bit of anointing on them, and we put them into cooking chicken for the pastor. Whew. Where are you going with this, pastor? I have no idea. Let's just get back on track here. Verse 14, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have this same passion. So if we don't have that same passion, what's Paul saying? Okay. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God's going to reveal it to them. Guess what? God's revealing it to you this morning, moving right along. Let us all advance together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one passion. So let me start with some questions here. What is different about your spiritual life right now 
compared to one year ago. I'm going to let you think on that while I sip some of my great lemonade berry. Let me continue the question. Have you personally changed? Another question. If I were a relative whom you had contact with one year ago, what would I notice that's different about you personally? Not your hair, not your weight, not your skin looseness or tightness. Asking again, what is different about you spiritually right now compared to one year ago? If I were somebody that knew you well, say a brother or a sister, sibling, and they saw you last year at this time, and they came and they saw you spiritually, what would they see different about you? Well, Pastor, I've said under 580 sermons. I've watched all these preachers on TV. That means nothing. What has changed in your life in the last year? If you look back on your life a year ago and today and they look the same, you are not progressing. I'm not preaching to you in here. I'm preaching to those on TV. You've heard me address this now on numerous occasions over the last 18 months. And these questions are posed to me by my conscience every few days. As I'm in prayer, they come up in my heart. Are you moving forward? Are you changing? Are you growing up? Are you maturing? So what I'm talking to you about today only comes from personal experience. I don't have to hear a preacher to get my messages. I can hear from my father and I can and look at my own life and get plenty of sermons. And what I'm telling you today is that if you are not progressing, you're going backwards. How many of you remember learning how to drive on that stick shift, that manual transmission? How many of you remember being on a hill with cars behind you How many of you found that when you let off the brake to give it gas, before you let the clutch out, it was already going backwards? I'm going to tell you that our Christian life is just like that. We are climbing the hill of victory. And if you're not careful, There's no neutral on that hill. You're either going forward, you're going backward, or you're not moving at all. And the scripture challenges us to always be progressing. Hallelujah. As Brother Hagen would say, either say, oh me, or amen. It's true, many have examined their life over the last 18 months and have made changes. Who can agree with that? I'm not looking. I'm just saying me. I've had to make some big changes. You've adjusted your passions and your interests to come more in line with the believer who's not just relying on position to make it to heaven, 
but one who is working with the Father in developing a closer relationship with Him. Now in this, these two verses that I have read, these two passages of Scripture out of Romans and Philippians, I'm going to give you some adverbs that are in these. All right, are you ready? Notice this, happy progress, passionate running. These are all in this Scripture. Straight running, together advancing. Now notice these verbs, happy progress, passionate running, straight running, together advancing. Do you see any, anywhere in here where it talks about neutral or taking it easy? Let's kind of paint a picture here. The Lord has asked me to do two things. Not just today. I had an encounter with Jesus. I haven't told anybody about it. Probably won't share much more than what I'm sharing today. But I had an encounter with Jesus. And he asked me to do these two things that I'm going to tell you today. Number one, prepare my children for battle. Did you hear me? Two things he asked me to do. Number one, prepare my children for battle. If he's asking me as a pastor in the five-fold ministry to help him prepare his kids for battle, what does that mean about his kids? The second thing he asked me to do is to help his kids prepare for his return. There are many things that are not going, on, going to change in our lives unless we change them. I'm going to say it again. There's not too many things in our life that are going to change unless we change them. Say, me, myself, and I. Pastor, are you almost done? Yes, I am. It would be so much easier if you would believe me and act on the things that we are sharing with you so we don't have to travel around the mountain again with the fiery serpents and scorpions harassing us all the way. I'm here to tell you this morning, church, we have a job to do. I'm telling you, the church over the last 20 years has gotten really lazy. I didn't say you. I said the church. The church as a whole has gotten really lazy. We've become very, especially the Word of Faith charismatic crowd, we got really comfortable in our position. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, a brand new creation in Him. Oh, well, there's a reason why we've made the righteousness of God in Christ. We got a job to do. The Bible specifically says in the book of Acts and also in the book of Joel, the Bible says that Jesus will remain in heaven until his enemies have been put under his feet for a footstool. How many of you can truly believe that God is seated on the throne in heaven? How many of you can truly believe that Jesus Christ is seated on his throne? In heaven. How many of you can truly believe that the Holy Spirit has been sent into the earth? And how many of you can truly believe that the Holy Spirit has been sent into the earth to help us? The Holy Spirit isn't going to put Jesus' enemies under his feet. He's going to help us put Jesus' enemies under his feet. 
And we have a job to do. And that job is not sitting at home enjoying the brand new 95-inch TV. that we used our faith to get. Do you know why God wants us to use our faith? You know, here's an understanding. This came to me when I was at Bible school at Ramah. I, this was a shock to me. But he said, he said this, How many of you have ever been in Brother Hagin's meetings where he doesn't even preach? You have the move of the Spirit, and people are falling out over here, and people are dancing over here, and people are prophesying back here, and all these things are happening. He doesn't even preach. And then he gets up, and he said, Now, for those of you that need to receive Jesus, I want you to come forward. And it fills the front of the auditorium of people that need to be saved. I was like, Yeah, I've wondered, how, how does that happen? And he said, I'll tell you how. Brother Hagin uses his faith to get people saved. That was a shock to me. And he said this, he said, those of you that are believing God to pay your bills, those of you who are believing God to get a new car, those of you that are believing God to pay off your home, he said, God wants you to use your faith on that so you can get really sharp at praying people and believing them into the kingdom. That is the ultimate goal of our faith. I'm here to say, for the most part, I was pretty lazy. Because I was getting all my stuff. Woo! I loved my new VCR. It worked so much better than those that would wrinkle all the tape up and pull the video out. Remember that? I loved my new cassette player. Then I could play my greatest hits of the Beatles. I'm here to tell you, God has called us to use our faith to bring people into the kingdom, to get people healed, to get people delivered to get people delivered, to get people delivered. I'm here to tell you, I have met more people. We were at a couple of Kevin Zadai conferences. I was shocked at how many Christians needed deliverance. They were, they were begging for help because they were being harassed by demonic spirits. Christians, did you hear me? Christians! Well, Christians can't be possessed. No, but they can sure have a demon in them, in their body, in their soul, attached onto them. And I'm telling you, we have a job to do. It's our job to put the enemy under Jesus' feet. And here's the good news. You is his feet. He is the head. And we are the how many of you, you know, here, Brother Gary, stand up here. Come up here. Stand right down here. Right here in front. Now, how many of you realize that Gary's body and his head came up here? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to go. Thank you, Gary. Now, Gary's head, would you come up here? <laughs> Rachel, come. No. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You understand, Jesus and his body are one. Jesus is the head. We are the body. Are the feet in the head? How many of you walked, saw a walking head come in here? Where are the feet? And in the book of Acts and the book of Joel, it says that he's waiting in heaven. God's going to hold him in heaven until we put his enemies under his feet. We are the feet. And I'm telling you, 
We should not be just glibly going around our whole day. I'm, this is the truth. When I am in Walmart, I see demons manifesting everywhere. Woo! And I'm telling you this. When I walk in Walmart, for some reason, they act out in front of me. They don't like it. They start swearing up a storm. I told you the story where I went in there and, and this man came walking by and he was using the F word. F, 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 F. I mean, just out of the blue, he was throwing the F word around. I was like, Ugh, I washed myself off. Went around the corner and here's a little four year old kid telling his mom, You little effer. I'm like, Whoa, is the devil manifesting in this house? I mean, four years old using that kind of language on his mother. Yeah, and the parents are, <laughs> you are, I mean, you are way out there. Let me tell you, here's the honest to God truth. We have such a big job, church. We have such a big job. We don't have time to be playing. We don't have time to be going backwards. We don't have time. Those of you that are watching on camera, you're watching me. I'm telling you, we've got a job to do. It's a big job. And Jesus needs us to get off our own pony and get on his. So, I'm going to close with these phrases again. Happy progress passionate running, straight running, together advancing. And I'm going to put them in a sentence. Happily progressing as we are passionately running straight. We are running together advancing. Do you see anything about backwards on that? Do you see anything about neutral? We have a job to do. Here's the wonderful thing. He sent the Holy Spirit in us to help us. As a matter of fact, I reminded the prayer team this morning, it says this, Jesus, uh, uh, Paul quoting the Holy Spirit said this, when you are weak, then I show myself strong on your behalf. And Paul said, therefore, I glory in my weaknesses. Because he will show himself strong on my behalf. Have you ever come to a situation you didn't know what to do? Aren't you glad that in your weakness we have one who shows himself strong and will help us through every single one of them? He is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that is here for us. Yeah, I'm telling you, it, it, this, this blows my mind. Since, a, since I was a young man, first saved, I was so shocked at the denomination that I got saved in that they were teaching because I had read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14. I heard so many ch uh, sermons out of chapter 13, and I, I heard uh, very few out of chapter 12 very few out of chapter 14 and whenever it was out of 12 or 14 it was to tell us that that had all passed away there's no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit you got all the Holy Spirit you ever need or want when you got born again I will tell you that is an L-I-E lie from the pit of hell there is a second work of grace. It is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he will come on your life according to Acts chapter 2. And not only will he empower you, but he will bring fire in your belly. Hallelujah. I learned this a long time ago as a teenager. When I served the devil, I served him well. How many of you, when you were born, before you were born again, maybe some of you after, when you were serving the devil, you did it with all your heart? I mean, whoo! 
if I drank, it was going to be until I was. If I sinned, it was going to be all my heart. Wow! Yep. Everything dove headlong. Yeah, baby. Bring it on. That's it. Then I got born again, and I kind of half-hearted served Jesus until I got reprimanded by the Holy Spirit. How is it that I rescued you from that life that you served with all your heart and all your passion, but I brought you into this kingdom and you only give half effort. I had to repent. I had never seen it. Nobody had ever told me that. I mean, all the sermons I ever heard was, you're going to hell! <laughs> I mean, preaching to a whole house full of Christians, you're all going to hell! <laughs> In a handbasket. Happily progressing as we are passionately running straight. We are running together, advancing. Did you say pastor? Did you say battle? Yes, I did. We have a battle ahead. I'm here to tell you, next year is election year. And it's going to get really ugly. And if you're not careful, you're going to get caught up in the anger, the bitterness, the rhetoric, the ugliness. And I'm telling you, it's a distraction of the enemy to get your focus off the kingdom and get it onto men. I am here to tell you this. No man, I'm going to say it again, no man, I'm talking about no man, no woman can straighten out the mess that we're in right now. None. There is only one entity in the earth that can change that. That is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be the strongest organism in the earth. We have the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of us. We have the fire of the Holy Ghost that goes before us, goes behind us, protects us, keeps us moving in the right direction, and He gives us Focus on that which is true and pure. I'm telling you, all of the stuff that we see in the news, all it is intended to do is irritate you. Well, Pastor, your message is irritating me. Good. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, we got such a glorious job ahead of us. I'm telling you, our funnest days are before us. We are going to have so much fun watching the devil bow his ugly knee to the name of Jesus. You start in your own circumstances. You got something going on your in your body? Let's get it healed. He doesn't have the right to do that to you. You are a son. You are a daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ. You belong to the great king. Do not let the devil push you around. Are you hearing me? We've got a job to do. All right. Well, pastor, I think I'm doing pretty good. Let me ask you, how many of you are on medication? Prescribed medication. Uh, 
That's what I'm talking about. Here, let's just do this. What was that all about, Pastor? You should have been here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just telling you, we have a big job to do. Say big job. It's to, it, I'm t I know this has been a little bit of a tough message, but I'm just trying to spur you on. Paul said, spur people up to good works. I'm telling you, we got so much glorious things that are awaiting us. The harvest truly is on, church. I'm not waiting for it. I'm not waiting for the move of God. I'm not waiting for the glory. I've been in services already where the house was filled with the glory. You could see it with your eyes. I'm not waiting for it. I'm telling you, it's here. And if we will begin to take it by faith. Oh, pastor said it's here. It must be here. It's not my word. Just trust the Lord. He said, all of the earth is filled with my glory. I trust my heavenly Father. We've got a job to do. It's greater than we've ever had in our whole life. And it's going to make us busier, 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 busier. But we need to cinch up our belt. I had to do that this morning. It's like, darn it, another hole. I'm just telling you, it's time to get with the program and let's do what Jesus called us to do. We are the sons and the daughters of the Almighty God. I know I've gone on and on and on, but I'm going to tell you again, we are the sons and the daughters of the Almighty God. He's waiting on us to get the job done. Say, say this with me. God, I am willing to be your vessel to get the job done to help get the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ under his feet. I am a willing vessel. Use me, God. Stand to your feet. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. He had his hand back there going with the, with the volume switch. I'm just telling you. So I, I've seen so many posts on Facebook. I hate screaming preachers. You can say it just as well quietly as you can loudly. That may be true. But I'm telling you, when you get under the anointing of an evangelist, of a, of a preacher, not a teacher, but a preacher. The anointing gets on you, and man, it's like a bomb goes off on the inside of you. I don't know how else to do it, but to just let it out. I'm here to tell you, God loves you more intensely than you understand. God, do you understand the richest thing in heaven? are not the streets, are not the foundations made of great gems, are not the gates made of one big pearl. It's not the river of life. It's not the beautiful trees. It's not the throne of God. The greatest treasure in heaven is you and me. Yeah. Romans 8.32 God 
freely gave us his son, how much more will he freely give us everything else? Why? Because he gave everything. He, Jesus, bankrupted himself for you. Isn't that huge? Lord, thank you for this precious body. Thank you for those that are gathered here. Thank you for those that are watching online. Lord, thank you that you are moving even with them in their homes, in their cars, wherever they may be listening. Lord, as we are, are here in the anointing. Ah, Lord, I thank you. I sense your power, Lord. It's such a sweetness of how much you care for each one of us. There is a deep divine love that goes beyond human comprehension. And it is prevailing in this room. Jesus, we love you. We honor you today, sir. And we tell you with all of our heart, we are your children to be used however you need us. I refuse to spend the rest of my days pampering Jan. It's time to honor Jesus. And so, Lord, today, with this congregation, with those that are watching, Rachel, I know you're watching on TV. Any of you others, we stand together agreed in this one body of how great Jesus is and how much we yield our hearts to you and want to do your pleasure. Lord, there are people in this city that need Jesus. There are people in their cities that need Jesus. There are people that need deliverance from demonic oppression. Lord, there are people that have had everything come against them in life since they were a little child. And Lord, they need healing. But they don't just need a, a, a soothing pat on the back and saying let's get it out of your soul they need deliverance they need Jesus they need healing that comes from heaven that moves on the inside of him not healing that comes from human voices but actual touch of heaven we speak over these people today Lord we call them healed and delivered as your people take their place we love you Jesus you are so good and you're so kind to us on this beautiful Father's Day Father we tell you happy Father's Day thank you for giving your son we honor you today Lord Father, I pray over everyone here, Lord, those watching, Lord, that this sermon would stick in them, stick in their spirit, and come up, and come up, and come up. Lord, open our eyes to see those around us. Lord, I drive up and down Highway 80, I drive up and down the Loop, I drive, drive up and down McCann and Judson, and I see homeless people everywhere. And we have such a great opportunity to be kind to them. That's who you are. You didn't leave us in our muck and our mire. You walked right up to us and said, I love you. Let me help you. Lord, I pray this body right here in Longview, Texas, where we have taken our territory, 
made the devil mad, he had to send a nasty storm. That's okay. Jesus is Lord. He rules and reigns, and devil, you're out, and we're in. I thank you, Lord, for this precious body, for these dads. Hallelujah. And we love you. We need to get something ready for the men. It's already ready. Guys, on your way out, pick up your extra goodies. We love you. Happy Father's Day. And uh, let me make my way to the back so I can greet you. And uh, thank you, Gary, for giving me breath mints. All of the people in here said, Hallelujah. God bless you. You are dismissed.